I'm getting old. We all know that I have some salt in the pepper that is my beard that has been around for a little bit, but I am starting to find salt in my chest hair and it's really kind of making me sad. They got like just for men. Would you dye your chest hair? Do you even have any chest hair? John, I'm pretty hairy, bud. I just trim it. Really? It's 100 degrees and 90% humidity. I have no desire to have sweat rolling down my body. Don't you think the sweat would roll down your body more because it has no hair to stop it? I think it makes it worse, at least in the armpits for sure. Wait, so you shave your armpits? I don't shave them. I take a beard trimmer to them. One of my buddies in school years ago, who's one of the few people I know hairier than me, he's like, dude, we're hairy. The other never touches the skin. If it doesn't go into the skin. It can't have an antiperspirant effect. Makes 100% sense, dude. Like, literally, one swipe, you're golden. Huh. Hello, everyone. My name is John Edwards, and with me, as always, is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us part of your day. So, so what you all are missing is that Zeke is now taking off his shirt, and he's raising his arms up so I can see both of his armpits. Like, this is the magic of the live chat that we have in order to record this show that people would probably pay money to see. And I think most of these people would be in Prov's picks to see Zeke Baker behind a microphone without a shirt. Like for me, it's disgusting. For some people, they'd really want to see it. <laughs> I'm just telling you, this is one of those like, you know, real moment guy talk things where you're hairy, you know some tricks to, to make your life a little better. It may look funny, but you get results at the end of the day. I have not found those tricks. I might be one of the only people that you know that's hairier than you. Only on the back, though. Oh, no. Definitely on the front, too. Maybe just because more surface area. <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> Anyways, today's show is sponsored by CastCartel.com, changing the industry standard as to how you get your alcohol. Now, what they do, they're like the Amazon of the spirits industry. They hook you up with retailers that want to sell and deliver directly to your door. And you can order by the comfort of your own couch. You can sit at home on your phone, find what you want, get it shipped to you. Obviously, some of the allocated stuff because of the convenience is going to cost a little bit more, but your daily drinkers should be on par with what you see in the stores. Find out for yourself. Go to cascartel.com. Also follow them on Instagram at cascartel. They are always doing awesome giveaways to their followers. Speaking of followers, we have a fan of the show today that met up with me when he was in town. His name's Robert. I do admittedly forget if he goes by Rob or Bob or Robert or Bobby or I'm hoping that this envelope that I have here and when he gives me the answers, I'm hoping that he signed it with how he likes to be called. <laughs> I'm a bad person, Zeke. Well, I was hoping it would be in the group you know, message thread, but I guess not. I looked at it. I could not figure it out. So I am dying to know what we drank. At the same time, I'm dying to know what to call him. I know he's Although, from Nebraska. My only like flashback memory thought to this, because admittedly that some of the random chats just kind of muddle and blur, especially after a few weeks. But I know somebody at some point made a comment after one of the Rye shows. And they're like, well, I hope you guys like Rye, because uh, that blind I sent is going to have a few in it. That was the uh, different guy. That was the other uh, blind cool. that we have. Oh, well. But we don't have answers for that unless you got answers from him. No, nah, but we can message him if we find his name. Yeah, we need him to send us an email that we don't open. We tried that. Blake sent three emails. Well, he sent them to you. That was the problem. I don't know what you're trying to say there. I'm more than dependable and reliable. Not three times, apparently. But Robert, thank you for sending us this blind and uh, meeting up with me when you were in town. You know, I remember meeting up with him, Zeke, because it was like the last time I went up to your B&B &B and dropped off samples. I had dropped some stuff off on your porch while you were at work, and it was after dropping stuff off at your house that I went over to a liquor store parking lot and met him. 
Seemingly Probably. enough, this was after we did some Elijah Craig shows, and I found an Elijah Craig barrel proof at that liquor store that day. So I was super pumped. Well, there you go. Yeah. Sometimes everything just lines up for you. Some days things come up Millhouse. I understand it. You know, I, I think alternatively, Monday was the opposite, though. Everything just lined up, and there, there was, you know, a good day. Silver lining due to uh, the Rona. Nothing better than having an entire place, gift shop, parking lot, et cetera, to yourself and, you know, eight friends. Anyways, we have a lot of whiskey to talk about here because there are four different samples he sent us. There were A, B, C, and D. For those of you that forget how we do blind tastings, this is our bread and butter. Zeke and I are super excited because this is kind of what we live for is going back and doing these blind tastings. It's how we earned our stripes. And what we do is Zeke and I have tasted through these. The envelope is sealed. We will give you the order of what we liked first before we actually know what is in there so that you could trust that we are giving our open and honest opinion about which whiskeys we liked the best. And then once everybody knows what the whiskeys are, we'll talk about tasting notes so that at that point, you're not just hearing us talk about A tasted like this, but you don't know what A was. Fair enough, Zeke? Hey, so long as you don't Steve Harvey it. I won't. What were your favorites ranking from best to worst oh we rank this in the front end yeah we always the, did you not just listen to me for two minutes go off Nah, anything more than 30 seconds i kind of phase out okay so zeke you're gonna rank them i'm gonna give the answer then we're gonna give tasting notes what are you gonna give your rankings to yes sir all right um i would say four two three one your favorite was D. Oh, these are letters. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> so your favorite was D. Your second yeah. favorite was B. Your third favorite was C. And your fourth favorite was A. Yeah. That's super funny. I'm never a big letter person. I don't know why. I know you're not. And this is going you back to when that. we had tons of these yeah. things where you would actually make up instead of going A, B, C, D, you would spell out like Kid Rock. But do you letter these things when you like itemize stuff? I never letter. I always do numbers. I don't know. Do you want to know what mine are? Mine was A, C, B, D. Now I'm wondering, because we don't know what's in the envelope. Maybe he did mess these up for us a little bit. We had two sets of these samples. We don't know if we were drinking the same thing at the same time. All I know is I felt like there was a lot of rye here. I don't know. Yeah, there were some that had a little bit more than others, though. Should we find out what's in here? I'm dying to know what to call him, but I'm also dying to know if we were drinking the same thing. Well, I would assume we were. I'm opening this bad boy up now. Zeke still has not put a shirt on, for all of you that are wondering. And now he's putting chapstick on his lips like Buffalo Bill. So I want to know, who do you have in a hole outside of your house right now? No, man, I got them. Goatee makes my lips chap easier. Here is the note. He did not sign it with a name. So Robert is where it goes. Well, I guess in that case, we can call him what we want. Just don't call him late for dinner. This is really funny. The first one is Nebraska straight bourbon whiskey, 86 proof, two years old from Loud River Distilling. You said Nebraska, 86 proof bourbon? just says whiskey from loud river distilling okay it says it's two years old i mean we'll get into it there was no youth on there for me on that one but moving on to b fray ranch straight bourbon whiskey 90 proof four grain first batch out of fallon nevada water source from lake tahoe c was a knob creek rye store pick from jack's liquor in fremont one of our favorite places 115 proof and then we had whistle pig 10 years old store pick from jack's liquor in fremont 112.8 proof warehouse 2 rick g level 3 so our friend mike over at jack's picked two of these you were right that a fair amount of these were rye we did have two ryes what are your thoughts knowing the answer to this stuff? Apparently, unbeknownst to yourself, and I think probably anyone we know or anyone listening, John Edwards is a huge fan of two-year Nebraska 86-proof whiskey. 
I mean, we're going to start buying in this shit by the case, people. Maybe you have to. There are some good stuff out there that's under 90 proof. I mean, look at Jim Beam repeal batch. You drink that all the time. <laughs> I know. I'm just laughing that out of this lineup, you went with the lowest proof one. It actually does not taste low proof to me, at least. Mm, maybe you poured them in the wrong direction. I totally did not pour them in the wrong direction. I mean, well, you can't place the blame on someone that was nice enough to give a sample. So I don't know where else you're going to assign this one. But I'm even more intrigued to hear your notes on these things now. Well, I am not placing the blame on anyone because I am very appreciative that I might have found something that I did not know about before that now it has my interest peaked. I would say the same thing for you. I mean, so what I take the cursory analysis that I will give based off of the answers here number one fray ranch and this nebraska distilling each of them were high up on one of our rankings so maybe those are two distilleries that we haven't had yet now we've had them we need to maybe seek out a little bit more from them to find out more because we might like them going forward you know like this might open our eyes you never know what's out there that you we don't see or hear about it's not popping on the boards. I think most of us miss it or hype or you know, whatever. And I will just say my tasting notes for D, Mike, I love you from Jax, but I apologize for my tasting note for D once we get there. <laughs> All right, Zeke, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, we're just going to go through these in uh, alphabetical order. Yes, alphabetical, not numerical. We will go alphabetical <laughs> order. And that is A, this is the Nebraska straight bourbon whiskey from loud river distilling i I apologize for calling it nebraska distilling before but it is loud river all right nose wise and i didn't go into a whole lot of detail really just kind of compared these more probably still in the mode from doing picks the past couple of weeks of just uh you know really trying to go apples to apples on things and see what i can get nuance wise nose for a i thought it had a rye spice and mint but also candy corn undertones. Palette-wise, I put seems lower proof and some corn present with the rye. There's a mild spice at the back and a slightly buttery finish. You could definitely tell that the lack of proof was present by the lack of abundance of flavors in any direction. Funny enough, I said this was the sweetest of the four on the nose. It had some dark red fruit to it, but also a sugary sweetness to it, like... I think that you take the notes aside, there are similarities in both of ours. There is some sweetness, like a candy corn is what you got, but candy corn is a candy. A little bit of fruit there for me, but also heavy candy component. The taste for me, I got a cinnamon red hot. The finish, I said, smack your lips and makes you want another, but I also got a little bit of a hug, which I was surprised for a lower proof there, but got a little bit of a chest burn on this. I think that has to be attributed to the youth, but I didn't get the overly corny taste that I would have expected from a two-year-old whiskey on this. It, it actually had a little bit of depth to it for me. Both of mine, like I say, the, the nose and the palate, the corn that I picked up, was uh you know secondary or tertiary it it wasn't a a dominant flavor by any means well moving on to b and b was my number three your number two that is the fray ranch straight bourbon whiskey so for this one and honestly between b and c it was a fairly close draw when you get to c i will point out what aspect that i ended up dinging it on but i said the nose was had a more pronounced mint but it seemed to be very wintergreen to me also, I got sweet sugars behind that, and I still can't think of what they're called. But you know, the um, it's a candy, it's a sour thing. It comes in like a long rectangular sleeve looking thing. It has little strings you pull. I mean, it looks like little round like string looking things. They're different colors. Is this the stuff you do at those EDM shows? No, you eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Zeke's going to Google it. This is a first, everybody. Zeke Baker is Googling something in the middle of our show. I am very proud of you. Okay, like look up sour punch straws. <laughs> this is something that like only you would know, and they sell it in the really sketchy stores. I love sour candy, son. I have never once had a sour punch straw in my whole entire life. 
Oh, well, so they obviously have different flavors. They didn't even have like a variety pack kind of looking thing. But so the green ones that come in there, though, this was it, that kind of sugary tart and also just a little bit drying from all of the, uh, you know, whatever the sour stuff is. They put on the actual straw. I don't know. I really thought it lined up pretty well for it on the smell. Granted, that's like I say, a lot of sour stuff. This stuff looks so bad for you, by the way. Oh, John, there's way worse things for you. Trust me. Palette wise, very middle of the road on flavors and proof. It didn't go any direction on like, you know, pluses or minuses, just very balanced, so to speak, in that it, it, it didn't shoot off in any direction for me at all. At one point towards the back end, I could have swore I tasted plantains, but it was a flash and I even put like a question mark down for it, but I did get that type of flavor toward the back. There was something that was a little bit funky with this one, not like funk. When I say funky, it's like a little different. Couldn't tell if it was finished or something that kind of almost had a mothball quality to it on the nose. Uh, Maybe a little bit of mint there too, but a slight amount of oak on the taste. Maybe a little bit of chalky on the mouthfeel. This one wasn't my favorite. I mean, this was my third. The finish, it was okay. I mean... This was not my favorite out of the bunch by any means, but uh, it wasn't bad. There were some things that were not my jam in the taste on that one. I mean, revisiting it now, I still think it's just a very, like a, a safe bet kind of pour. It, it doesn't take off in any direction, whether it be in... Can you show me that label? Part. It's just, I thought you had blue tape on there. I was really worried for a second. I'm not that slow, Edward. I was like, did you just drink the wrong samples? Yeah, I'm intrigued by that. I'm going to say what I've got. Well, uh, We'll have to revisit this later one day. <laughs> I want to reach out to them, see if I can get some. I mean, obviously, we would be happy enough to pay for it, but I'm intrigued now with that one and the 86 proof I liked from Loud River. All right. Well, I'll let you uh, lead in on number C. So n- <laughs> number C, if you're from Georgia, was a Knob Creek rye picked from Jack's Fremont in Nebraska. This one was my second. I think it easily could have gone either way between one and two for me. I really liked the nose was a smoked kielbasa sausage char, a little bit of something there from the grill. So something coming off the grill. I love what I make Zeke kind of just go back in his chair. Is that what you had for supper? Is it still in your mustache? No, I had salmon fish tacos tonight. Note to self, might not be best to have salmon prior to tasting, especially if it's smoked. No, it was in the oven. There's nothing I did wrong. Continue on. I I can't wait to hear what comes next. I'm I'm intrigued on the edge of my seat. I think the nose carries over to the taste very well. I got a little bit of smokiness on this and had all sorts of things I liked. And the finish was was very good. Overall, this was a very enjoyable pour for me. My side of the coin on this one, I really thought all these were rise going into them. I put down the nose for this one was sweeter compared to the first two. It reminded me of smelling cotton candy. Not a smell of cotton candy. But like, you know, you look at it, you smell it, and it's like you can just tell you're smelling something fluffy and kind of not a strong nose, but just in the air a little bit. I don't know. That's what popped in my head randomly. Then as I got the nose in there a little further, big old black pepper started coming off this thing. Pretty strong. Palette-wise, you could definitely tell both the flavors and proof were increased here compared to the previous two that we had. And... Towards the back, it was really starting to, it almost too bitter, but it wasn't. But you could tell it was like literally on that precipice of, all right, somebody left this in the barrel just a little too long. It's starting to get bitter at the back end, and and that was a bit of a turnoff for me. That little bit was not there on the finish. I would easily call this like a 3.4 or a 4 out of 5. only reason I really dinged it was just that bitterness in the back end, and, and you know I'm picky about that. It's not my jam. That was literally the reason that I ended up putting B above C was just that bitterness I got on the back end uh, just kind of turned me off. And especially when you get something you don't like at the end of the tasting profile, you know, it just seems to hang around with you more than if it had been on the inverse. I get that. I understand where, where you're coming from on that. What about numero D? Nose. This one I just put down, it was much bolder than any of the other three we'd had. And it reminded me of black pepper lemon thai chicken that's where i went what'd you have for dinner tonight bowl of chicken noodle soup see you're eating fancy over there <laughs> man i've been on a big soup crave lately. i don't know why it's weird to eat soup in the summer when it's hot but i don't know i've been on i don't know palette wise 
this one really I thought was unique in that the peppery component was at the front instead of the back end. And then I put it moved into a rind zest that leads into the finish that just kind of hung around in that rind zest area profile. Really just no heat or bite at all on the back end. Rind flavor kind of rode out for me. It, it really reminded me of, of, you know, anytime you drink an old fashioned and it's got that rind garnish on the side that just automatically kind of lingers no matter what you're tasting that really just kept being present on the finish that hung around for me pretty well so i thought this was a pretty darn enjoyable pour so this was your number one this was my number four i said the nose is light a balance between white wine and having some ethanol with some light fruit taste i said no <laughs> and the finish i said no sorry <laughs> uh, and one of the few times uh I'll be the one that makes the, the dad joke a reference. It just reminded me of my daughter because Layla's favorite word is no. Sophia does this thing now where she goes, oh, like when she gets mad, she goes off. She's like, daddy, I wanted to do this. And I go, no, Sophia, you can't do this. And she goes, oh, well, you know, the conversation you got to have though, right? What's that? You got to start early on explaining, well, you look, you know, there's needs and there's wants and you have to learn to differentiate those two things. Oh, completely understood. And. One of the sad things that happened today, she came back and said one of the boys in the school said that she's funny and he doesn't like funny. She was going to stop being funny because this other student did not like a funny girl. And I said, no, Sophia, you stay you. You be you. You be funny. Don't ever change for a man. <laughs> you went that far. I'm there starting her off right at four years old, you know? Oh, Jesus. I was like, you I'm find really the man that likes you for who you are. You don't change for him. I'm really surprised you didn't like this one, though. I mean, I, I, know, I know some ryes aren't necessarily your jam, but I, I didn't think this was a, a bold rye in any sense or like, you know, one direction versus another. One of the things that put this last for me is because it was not definitive one way or the other. I didn't get a boldness from it. I didn't get a lot from this. It was the most that was like wine to me. It was the most that was like a, a white wine. And that's not really my jam. I drink red wine when I drink wine. I struggle to get the, the white wine aspect of it. Like I said, to me, I really go somewhere between lemon and orange rind zest. And I get the smell of it, but it's like smelling from the outside, not the inside of the peel, if that makes sense. Inside the pill to me is more bittery. Now you're just getting deep and philosophical again. Uh, you know, it happens. Whistle pig is really hit or miss with me. If you think about that New England Barrel Society whistle pig that we had that I really just thought was chalky. And I think whistle pig has some great stuff. And I think we've had great whistle pig picks. We've made a great whistle pig pick, but there's a lot of stuff up there that depending on whether or not it's coming from Canada or whether or not it's coming from MGP, there's just some nuances there that I don't always get down with. Well, plus, I mean, we've said it more than a handful of times by now. It's a lot easier to me to get people to agree on what a good bourbon is, quote unquote, versus a good rye. I mean, going back to the pick on Monday, uh, you know, when we had some free time, we were with, uh, you know, Patrick, James, Justin, and I are all sitting there going through some of the NBC ryes and tasting those. And the variance of who liked what and then, you know, going back and trying to rank them, it's just like, man, like here's four of us that, you know, we all would agree we would trust the other's palates, but the rankings were just a total, like, you know, shit show almost of, as far as like top to bottom. But it was funny to see it, look at it, and then talk about notes from it, you know, but that's where the fun and nerding out over some of it is. You know, your bourbon palate, you might like sweet more than spicy, but once you get to rye, everything has somewhat of a little bit of a spice to it. There's a different variance in that rye world that isn't there in the bourbon world that you're going to have some people that were together on one side are going to be divided on the other. You know, obviously where the grains come from and things of that nature. I think there's more variance in those grains as well, too. All about the wood and shoot, even stuff we learned from Heath Clark. Like, when did you put it down? Did you put it in the barrel in the winter or the summer? Did you <laughs> then dump the barrel in the winter or the summer? There are other nuances to rye that we don't necessarily think about with bourbon that add that variability to the end product. No, for sure. And uh, in the simplest form, though, I, I certainly appreciate this. Uh, Robert, it 
allowed John and I not have to debate over what we were going to taste tonight or review and whatnot. And then also <laughs> clearly gave some good laughs as we had a uh, quite difference of opinions regarding how we would rank these or uh, score them, so to speak. I am very much looking forward to figuring out some of this other stuff, like from Loud River and from Frey Ranch. I really want to check them out. Oh, man, Atlas in Nebraska. We'll get him to hook you up. I know we are going to have to talk to Atlas and Mike, you know, Mike Bridges over at Jack's. I'm sorry. I didn't love your whistle pig, but I loved your knob Creek rye. So, <laughs> you know, I just, it's whistle pig. I, I have a little bit of a fickle palate with them. Uh, we've been on a big ride here lately. I, I think it's bombarding you. I'm kind of feeling overwhelmed, but I do love when our listeners send in these blinds they're some of my most favorite shows because a we don't know what we have b we we don't know what we're gonna find out we might like some distilleries we didn't know about before but c these shows always give us a good chance to have a lot of hell with each other yeah and four i still feel like zeke wins if we put out a good show i win you're just along (laughs) for the ride Oh, me. No, this was fun. Honestly, uh, it was, this was good. I think we got a few more of these coming out in the next uh, few weeks as well, folks. If Z uh, can figure out what was sent to us. I was going to say, apologies to the folks that have sent in stuff, and it's been more than a few weeks. We sincerely apologize, but we're working on getting there. Uh, obviously, it's not a lack of enjoying getting into the samples and these kind of shows. It's literally just been trying to coordinate the damn thing, so. Our apologies. Do you have more blinds on your end? Because I don't have more blinds. I just saw another one in the box you sent me. Yeah, that's the one that is the three that we don't know what they are. But oh, look- okay. Um, no, I got another one from a local guy, too. Uh, one of the guys that won one of the Wolfpack KC bourbons uh, gave us a blind. Well, heck yeah. Whoever that was, thank you. And His name's Daniel Cothern, I think. Cothern, I may say it wrong. He's a local guy, though. Well, thank you. That was very nice of you. Zeke, the folks can get our official Glenn Karen glass at premiumbarproducts.com. You can also go there and laser etch whatever you want on some awesome glasses. So go to premiumbarproducts.com, click on the menu, go down to DDB glass, get ours. You can actually get the Wee Glen, the regular Glen. You can get the perfect dram, which is my favorite glass right now. It is a three ounce tasting glass. It's just the right size to put just a little amount in there and get a very, very good nose and taste from you can also do bar products like shakers or bar spoons and they're just good people over at premiumbarproducts.com if you are a distillery or a bourbon group or you are a store owner and you have a bigger order go ahead and reach out to me and i will get you in touch with the folks over at premiumbarproducts.com so that you can do a bigger wholesale order the folks can find Zeke and I on Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Instagram at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. You can find us wherever you download your podcast. Chances are you already have because you are listening to us right now. Leave us an open and honest review like we leave open and honest reviews about the whiskey we drink. Zeke, where else can the folks find us? Good old Nashville, Tennessee, and maybe a few other spots in the next few weeks. Cheers. Ciao. Ciao.